So one of my favorite things is when people ask me, Hey Austin, is there math in respiratory school? Are we going to have to do chemistry? What's going on? Is respiratory therapy school hard? So I'm going to answer all those questions today. Um, if you don't know who I am, my name is Austin Marks and I'm currently a respiratory therapist. So I've been RT for about two and a half years now. So um, on my YouTube channel, I mainly talk about respiratory therapy. I do have a few other videos mentioning a few other things. If you like what you see, make sure you like and subscribe. I am also the admin of a Facebook group called the RT Club. This Facebook group is full of respiratory therapists, respiratory therapy students, anyone looking to aspire respiratory therapy. So if you want to be part of that community, make sure you head over to Facebook and join it. Once again, it's the RT Club. So first off, I want to talk about, um, is there math in respiratory therapy school? Well, I just want to introduce you to the book that I had through our respiratory therapy school. So you can see it's nice and thick. And this is full of math problems. <laughs> so if they're going to let you uh, just work on the life support machines or the ventilators that are keeping people alive, you're going to have to do a little bit of math because you just can't go in there and start touching stuff. So I believe this had a hundred some problems in it. It's not terrible. Plus, it's all pretty easy stuff if you ask me. Um, looking at it for the first time, if I was to show my mom this, she would have no idea what she's looking at. However, once you start going through school and they kind of start explaining stuff to you, things make a little bit more sense. Plus, with this book here, it explains everything for you. Um, it gives you the equation, the example, gives you a few references, and then it gives you a few problems as well. So it kind of lets you work through all the different things that's going on. And just to give you an example of a math problem, so let's say a person is getting a, a certain FiO2 or a certain amount of oxygen, and we need to measure the oxygen in the blood, and we're looking for an adequate level. We want to get a certain level of oxygen within the blood. So this would be known as the PaO2. So we're looking for the amount of oxygen that we need to give the patient in order to go ahead and get the correct PaO2 that we want. So I'm going to throw the equation up there. Um, like I said, you're looking at this for the first time. You're going to have no idea what's going on. But going to respiratory school, you get the hang of things. So I'm going to show you one more here. So this one here is the alveolar air tension or the alveolar air equation. So this kind of lets us see the PaO2 that I was talking about, or the pressure of oxygen within the body. So you can see it's a big long equation. You're looking at it thinking, what the heck? I promise you it's not that bad. Once you do it a few times, it's easy. Um, there are a few other things as well that you need to look at. So we do a lot of pharmacy stuff where we deal with drugs and dosages. So you gotta know the math and everything to make sure that you're giving your patient the correct amount of uh, drug. So in the real world, we don't actually do this, but throughout school, you have to do different equations to make sure that you're giving your patient the right amount of drug and you don't harm them in any way. So stating all that, yes, there is math in respiratory therapy school. Air does not just go in and come out. It's not that simple. Um, so is there chemistry? So yes, our body is full of different chemicals, uh, different elements. So one thing that we really work with as respiratory therapists is something known as arterial blood gases. So this is what it's mainly composed of. You can see that we have the pH, which is chemistry. And then we have all these different compounds here. Um, so we can see that a lot is going on. Uh, we deal with all of this. So we want to mess around with these chemistries here and make sure that we're getting them at the adequate levels or the levels that we want. So like I said, there are so many other different chemicals or elements going on in the body. So you have the potassium, you have the sodium, you have the chloride, you have so many different things. I can, I can go on and on, honestly. But when I'm looking at my patient and I want to see what's going on with them, I go right to their labs, right to the chemistry, and I look at all of that stuff. And that tells me a whole lot of information based on what their chemistry is compared to what it should be. So is all of this difficult? Like I said, no, it's not too difficult. So you're doing it for the first time, it's new, yes, it'll be hard. However, you do it a few times, you get to practice, 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 and you understand things a little bit more, you understand 
why you're doing these certain equations, then it starts to make a little bit more sense. One thing I absolutely hated about math class was they'd give me a word problem and I'd be like, who cares? None of this matters. Why am I doing this random equation? But with this stuff, it's you're actually understanding why things are making sense. Why do these things happen? Um, why is this chemistry like this? What is going on within the body? And things make a little bit more sense, which makes it a little bit more fun, I would say, if math is fun in any way. But um, I enjoyed it a little bit more than my math class. So like I said, um, there is chemistry, there is math, there's all that fun stuff. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you have any questions about anything, make sure you leave in the comments below and I'll get back to you. See you in the next one.